Hey guys, welcome to another Heavy Metal Diecast video, and we have another one here from Corgi. It is 172nd scale, of course, and from the Aviation Archive. We have here a North American B-25 Mitchell, and obviously here it is from a number 226 squadron from the RAF in June of 1944. The RAF would receive nearly 900 of these Mitchells entering service in January of 1943. Uh, during the RAF service, these uh, would be referred to as a Mark I or a Mark II, depending on the variant, of course, and our particular model is a Mark II which is a B-25J as you can see and as I said it is from the 226 squadron which was originally formed in 1918 a briefly seen action in World War One from April to December before being disbanded of course at the end of World War One. they were reformed again in 1937 to see action during World War Two, obviously which this aircraft is from and the unit would then be disbanded once again at the end of World War Two. they were briefly activated again in 1959 during the Cold War period as part of Project Emily and then they were disbanded in 1963. Um, they were one of 20 strategic missile squadrons for the Thor ballistic missile sites. But uh, we'll do, let's talk about this and we'll do more opening the box and we'll check this diecast model out. So here it is out of the box. I did buy this second hand for $145, as you can tell by the sort of ratty condition of the exterior of the box. It had a few, you know, shelf wear and scuff marks. They are a limited run, of course, with these corgi ones. It does have a little uh, booklet that does have some information about the aircraft. And it does have its limited run. There are only 2010, it's an unusual number, um, of these available worldwide. So if you want one, you've only got 2010 to choose from. We'll get this packet open. And it does have the usual Corgi cradle stand that these uh, larger aircraft do. This is metal. The larger aircraft usually are supplied with a uh, cradle. And of course, you know, you just quickly whack that together. And that's uh, the cradle done. And it does have that little baggie here. that does have the undercarriage and some little accessories. Looks like a little stool and everything like that a couple of little um, accessories for the you know gear bay doors and everything like that but more importantly let's get this aircraft out hopefully um it does pop out nicely as i said i did purchase this second hand and here we got it out successfully i'll move this big blue packet out of the way this does look really nice it's got those nice d-day sort of uh striping on there it's got, it's actually got a reasonable weight to it too. This, this particular model is quite, quite heavy. And uh, we'll have a look at those panel lines first. It's got some fantastic detail. It, it looks really nice. That looks really good. We'll have a look at down the fuselage and we'll come down this way. You can see the rear turret. It does look like there's a crew member in that turret as well. So with, with Corgi, uh, they, they usually do have the um, crew members in their aircraft, and which is really cool. So hopefully we'll be able to see some of those in a bit of detail inside through some of the windows, if I can get uh, some focus in close enough. It's got some really nice detail. You can see the uh, crew figures inside the cockpit there. Hopefully through those canopies, you can see their life jackets and everything on there. The propellers, yep, spin without a problem. Well, that's cool. And I reckon overall it's got some great detail. The colours, the paint application, very nice. I think it looks really good. Hopefully the camera does show the, the colours. We will turn it over and have a little look underneath, of course. Well, wow. that's very... Um, blue <laughs> and of course all the d-day markings do go all the way through underneath as well and we'll have a little closer look underneath there hopefully the brightness of that blue does not play havoc too much with the camera sometimes certain colors do play with the camera a little bit it makes the colors change so i think the details very nice and obviously the uh, main landing gear will go there and there and then the nose wheel, of course, there. There is a, what looks to be a, like a little hatch there and the cradle stand. But I think going... Yes, okay. Okay, yeah. Okay, there's a little bit of ordnance and bomb load in there. Hopefully you can see that. That's pretty neat. And it closes up nicely. That's... that's does fit up nicely too it closes all nice that is really cool 
and uh, oh, we've got it turned over. So what I'll do is I'll fit the landing gear on it and we'll uh, have a look at it all set up for wheels down. So for wheels up, it's just these uh, three pieces here. It does come in this little stool if you have the rear section of the aircraft open. And this is the open section for the aircraft where you place the stool. Uh, one thing, it has the uh, blue that's underneath the aircraft, but it needs the D-Day markings on there. So when you, it doesn't have the right, uh, it doesn't have the right markings on the door here. Th that door should be the same color as that, and it is not. So uh, I'll put this on the model and you will see the difference. Be right back in a second. Okay, so this is with all the landing gear and everything on. Um, what I'll do is I'll go straight to that little door and show you what I mean. As you can see there, so the D-Day markings, uh, they go right around the aircraft. And as you can see, the door that you have when you have in-flight, um, it has the correct markings. But if you want to have it with the little stepladder out that rear and have that stool, um, it doesn't have those D-Day markings there. So that is a, a little bit of a whoopsie by uh, Corgi there. But overall, the aircraft itself is still fantastic. I think it's really well made, um, apart from that little little paint whoopsie. But I reckon it's pretty cool for sure. So we'll flip it back over and have a little look. And the turret, as you can see, the turret does move. The guns do elevate up and down as well. So that's another another cool feature. That nothing else. I don't think the uh, anything else opens or anything like that. I, I won't try and open force anything open because i don't want to break this um they're as i said they're only limited run but i reckon overall this does um set up nicely and i reckon it's pretty cool especially you know it's got the, the moving turret it's got the opening uh bomb bay as well and you can see a little bit of that ordnance inside the aircraft and the the wheels they all do they all do roll all three do roll there is some like nice uh tire tread on the tires as well which looks really good the overall engine detail is not too bad as well. But I think overall this aircraft, yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't mind it at all. I will put it on the deck. And it sits there nicely. Sometimes you sort of worry a little bit with the uh, nose wheel, um, the tricycle landing gear aircraft, if they tilt back on the, their ass ends <laughs> sometimes. But this one's made well. It does set up very nicely. And I reckon it's a pretty cool one indeed. And uh, hopefully you do as well. And if you do, hey, throw us a little bit of a like. That'd be awesome. And if you've yet to subscribe to the channel, feel free to do so as well. And I reckon this is a nice little unit from Corgi, of course. So once again, this is 172nd scale die cast. It is by Corgi, as I said. It's the Aviation Archive. This is a North American B-25J Mitchell, or the Mark IIs, or Mitchell II, as they call them in RAF service. It is from the number 226 squadron from the RAF. Uh, in June of 1944 and I reckon this is not a bad looking unit as well you'll be pretty happy if you can get your hands on one of these as well alright guys I'll wind this video up I'll take some photos of this uh, Mitchell and chuck them on at the conclusion of the video and you can check them out without my sausage fingers in the way of course I do appreciate you coming to check out another one of our videos thank you so much for coming to the channel and supporting it with your valuable time alright guys you have a fantastic rest of your day cheers guys